In today's video, we're going to be talking about whether or not you should be buying a laptop or a desktop as your first ever programming computer in 2018. Now, this really depends on what it is that you wish to achieve. Because obviously a laptop is extremely versatile. You can take it with you. You can do work commuting. You can do work on the train, on the plane. You can do work whilst you're on vacation. Not that I recommend that, of course, but you can just do work wherever you need to go. However, laptops aren't as powerful, obviously, as desktop machines, as machines that you have standard and static under your desk with a monitor attached and a keyboard and a mouse. Usually those can be upgraded. Usually those are more powerful, more performant, can do more taxing tasks um, than your laptop counterparts. Now I use a MacBook Pro and I also use an iMac here in the office. I also have various uh, Linux boxes as well. However, this is a fairly new office, so I don't have many of those installed. And what I usually do sometimes is I use virtual machines in my iMac here to actually access other operating systems. So if I want to use a Windows machine or if I want to use a different, a distinct flavor of Linux, then I would spin that up in a virtual machine if I don't actually have my physical boxes working under the desk here. And that's something that you can do more on a desktop machine than you can do on laptop, laptops, simply because of the resources, the resources required, the upfront resources required for virtual machines are more there for perhaps your desktops than your laptops. If you wanted to really max out your laptop, then it's going to cost you a lot of money and you can get far better kit, far better gear, far better hardware in a desktop machine. However, you are then anchored to that one specific place. Now, if you're a student, if you are someone who is going to college very frequently, then I highly recommend a laptop simply because you can take it with you. You can take all of your class notes. You can take your, your uh, program that you're creating with you all the time. However, like I said, there is a trade-off with resources and, and so forth. Back when I was at university, I was, I had a very old desktop machine that I used, um, pretty much all the time to do 3D animation and to do uh, rendering of various bits and pieces. And I did most of my code work on the actual laptop um, because I found that very easy and versatile. I could go downstairs, I could watch a film, I could do some coding for university whilst I was actually sat with the, the other um, people in my in the house that I was living at. Whereas the desktop machine I was using as basically a powerhouse, even though it's very old, that was what I was using to render 3D animations um, that we were doing at university. So what I'm saying is that you need to treat desktop machines and laptop machines very, very differently. They have very different distinct use cases. I also do a lot of my graphics work on the iMac here, on the desktop, simply because of the power that I can use. I use uh, Premiere. This is my machine that I record and edit these videos on. I appreciate you're not going to be doing video editing work when you're coding. However, the reason why I brought it up is that you might be doing web design and therefore you're going to need a graphics package perhaps a Photoshop. And those are usually very resource hungry. And if you're a coder, you're going to be doing coding. You're going to have a browser open an IDE open and Photoshop and other applications running at the same time. Resources suddenly quickly get used up. So you might therefore want to use a desktop instead of a laptop. However, if you are just a coder, so if you're not doing any web design whatsoever, you might as well just get a laptop because when you're writing code, you are simply writing syntax in a particular order that actually creates an application. 
If you were to use perhaps things like Docker, then that is slightly more of a resource beast. You're also using things like Vagrant as well, or Puppet. However, if you're just starting out, you probably won't be using those kind of things. So if you're just a coder, then go for a laptop. Now let's go and talk about the software. Let's go and talk about what it is that's on either your desktop or your laptop. This depends really on what it is that you're building. So for example, if you are producing mobile applications and if one of those mobile applications is iOS, then unfortunately you're probably going to have to get a Apple product. So like what I've got here, I've got a MacBook Pro and I've got the iMac because simply because I've built a couple of mobile applications in iOS and I need to have Xcode in order to do that. Yes, I write those in say JavaScript and cross compile them down to your iOS platform, but I still need iOS in order for me to do that. So first of all, don't just go, oh, I quite fancy this laptop to write code on. You need to decide what code, what platforms you're actually going to use. Now, I also recommend that you write code on the platform that is very close to whatever it is that you're deploying code to. So if you're a web developer, for example, and you're pushing code to a Linux server, then I highly recommend you try and go as close to that Linux distribution as possible. The trouble there is that Linux is a very um, steep learning curve, but there has been numerous amounts of times that I've found myself in where code runs on a Windows machine, on a Windows laptop that I was using, or a desktop that I was using, but it simply doesn't run correctly on a Linux box out there in the wild because the code is interpreted slightly differently by the operating system layer. Perhaps there's permission issues. Perhaps there is issues with just how the, the files are structured. Um, and that has tripped me up quite frequently. So what I try and advise people to do is to try and minimize the amount of barriers that you put in place between you actually developing code and you actually deploying code. Now, Docker for me has changed, transformed this whole process completely over the years because now I can actually create Docker images that very, very closely, if not do mimic on a one-to-one -one basis what is out there in production with some of my clients. However, I know that this isn't always going to be the thing. You will have to know Docker in order to do that. And if you are interested, I do have Docker courses that I'll put down in the show notes here. But if you are just coming out and learning coding to begin with, then that's probably um, to, a, a big ask to just suddenly learn Docker just for the sake of getting over these platform inconsistencies. So to do try and mimic your development machine to what is the thing that you're running on. And I see dual booting and I see virtual machines as almost like more barriers of entry. Um, because you want to get to your code extremely quickly, right? So you don't want to have to restart your machine just in order to write some code and then restart it back just to get to Windows or something. And also you don't want to have to designate a lot of resources just to a virtual machine just because you want to go in and tinker with some code left, right and center. So like I said, the host machine, try and mimic that as a one-to-one, -one, as close as you can get to whatever it is that you're deploying on. If you are a .NET developer, if you are someone who is going to be working on Windows code, then use Windows. There's no point in using other distributions if that isn't the thing that you're actually working on. Don't shoot yourself in the foot by just having to create a Windows virtual machine just because you need to run .NET. And don't think that because Windows allows you to write uh, or access the Linux bash shell doesn't mean that that's true Linux. It's not. You'll find yourself having to do or jump over many hurdles in order to do that. My final piece of advice for what computer you should buy in 2018 when you are coding 
is all about the whole purchase process. Try and purchase as much hardware as you can possibly afford because you'll be appreciating that in years to come. Whatever you buy now, you want to be using in years to come. The problem here is that software moves so fast and has its own requirements. Before you know it, you're going to be running out of not only disk size, CPU, bandwidth, as well as RAM. And this has happened to me before. What you want to do is try and future proof whatever it is that you're purchasing. So try and spend as much as you can on your machine. And remember, this is a tool for you to use in a professional world. This isn't just something that you can just run computer games on and just relax and chill out for a few a few hours every evening. This is something that you need to actually create and build and develop applications that will hopefully be your profession. So whatever it is you purchase, do let me know. Put your thoughts down in the comments below. What have you purchased? What it was your first ever machine that you bought when you were learning to code. I'll be interested to hear from you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.